Welcome back to the weekly yarns. Those of you new, my name's Barry. Sorry guys, I'm on the phone again today. Um, as you see, we've got some of our sheep here. Uh, these ladies <coughs> are just weeks away from having their babies. So we've got them out here today because they're all going home on the trailer uh, in the shed. They're going to be looked after in the shed till they've had the babies and then they'll be back out in the fields again. But it's a good job they're coming in. I'll show you this field. This is the field they've come out of. Now everybody's saying that we've had a dry February. Sorry it's a bit, sorry it's a bit shaky there. Try my best for you. Look at the water lying in this field. Look at here. The water. And I know that field out here looks dry. I've just walked across that in order to bring the sheep in and get them into this pen. That field is like this. The entire field is soaking. Hence we're not taking vehicles or pens into the fields. It's just far too wet. We've got them out on the roads. Let's have a look at them. Look at the, the amount of water that's lying. I'll show you the other way, but you just get wiped out by the sun. Right, let's have a look at some of our girls. Gemma and Johnny's already away with the first load. So we've got these just waiting for that transportation to come back. But they're all heavily in lamb. All these girls are having twins, hence. The red dots on the bums here, you see them? You've got the red dots on. Because this is go through the scanner to get a red dot for twins, blue dot for singles, uh, an orange dot or an orange stripe for triplets, which we don't have so many of this year. And there's one, we'll see, I don't think she's in this bunch, she's in a different field, but we'll show, we'll, we'll find her. There's one with a big smiley face drawn on her side and that's because she's going to have quads. She's going to take some special looking after because they'll be tiny when they come out. They'll be really tiny. But you can see all the girls happy here. They know they're going home. When the trailer comes they just they don't take much persuading to get on the trailer and get themselves away uh, and they'll be in the shed and an hour or so, tucked up nice and warm and dry. Bob's your uncle. This weather was never forecast today. It was forecast for showers, cold, wind. Not today. Must be. That's glad. <laughs> you can see. Right, There's beautiful blue skies, beautiful sunshine. Lovely little breeze, come, it's westerly today, coming off the land, coming this way. Nice and warm, it's got to be 12, 13 degrees today. And you just, as I say, never ever forecast for this. But we'll not complain, will we? We'll make the most of this. We'll have some more of this, and in fact, you know, if we had another fortnight of this, so you're probably thinking, what's happening to our tractor this week? Well, those final drive castings, I'm getting at them with, I've got them in the garage. I'll, I'll take you for a walk around either tonight or tomorrow morning when we get home. Um, I've got them, the paint off. I've been at them with a wire brush. All, I've got all the parts for them now, all the seals, all the O-rings. Everything's back. Um, the cover, the, the cover off the back of the final drive came up nice. The bearing, the other seal carrier for the final drive shaft has come up nice and clean. Uh, the final drive itself and the wheel hub has come up to the point where I'm happy with it ish. But the main casting 
there's a lot of rust still on the main casting and I think it's because it's heavily pitted and I'm in two minds as to whether or not that is going to need a sandblast to get it looking nice. Um, but as I say, I'll take you for a walk around when we get later on, when we get home, after we get all these shifted. But it might be dark then, so if it doesn't happen tonight, I'll see what we can get um, a look in the garage tomorrow. And we'll show you what we've been up to, and we'll show you all the bits, all the parts that's arrived. And we'll also show you, we'll go through the numbers, the part numbers with you. Alright. The reason why we didn't get a lot done with the tractor this week is because we spent most of the week up at the farm doing all the jobs related to the sheep coming home. Uh, water lines, roofs, gates, putting curtains up. No, it's not sort of closing curtains to keep the light out. Uh, it's, well, it's the windproof curtains will go across the top of the doorways to stop the wind and the rain blowing in should we get a storm when these little girls are in the shed. Um, so I had to do a couple of those movements, we had to do some water works, a couple of taps that were dripping, a couple of uh, troughs that needed sorting out. Just getting caught up on all the jobs, getting ready for these girls coming home. Look at this little fella up in the tree here, he keeps climbing up to those branches. You can hardly see him. He's there. Lovely little robin. See him sitting there? Listen to him singing. Now he comes from that hedge line there, he's just way back down there. He comes from that hedge line there and he flies across to that bush and he goes up in that bush and he sings his songs. There he goes. He's back over there in that hedge. So he must his nest must be in that hedge row there somewhere. But he's going up there, singing his little head off. Try and please his missus. Don't you just love Mondays? I know this stretch of the road here really doesn't like us because the last time we were on this stretch we had the uh, cattle trailer with the bull in it. And the Land Rover broke down on the hill up there. We we'll had to get the police here for that one because the idiot motorists were trying to kill with and the bull. But aye, this uh, tyre went. Noticed it when I was just had a quick, obviously checking my mirrors. Most of the smoke pouring off the back end there. And sure enough, one deceased tyre. Never mind, we'll get it sorted. Right, so we've got all the bits now for to be able to put the final drives back together once we get them cleaned up and sorted out. So um, what we've got, we've got the seal. This is the pinion shaft seal. This is AgriLine part number 9127. We have the seal fully metal encapsulated. This is part number AgriLine again, 75523. This fits into the seal carrier that you've got to jack off. It is for the output shaft from the final drive to the where the hub is. Um, we've also got two O-rings. This is Kilo 623545. These are the O-rings that fit on the caps that cover the end of the pinion shaft that are kept in with two circlips. Now the circlips that came out, well, one is still in at the moment, but the circlip that came out was badly corroded, didn't snap. It, if you really, really wanted to push your luck, you could probably put it back in. 
but I thought it was just as easy just to buy two replacements. Now, the little O-rings, you can remember in the last video, I was asking for your help for these little O-rings. And these were the ones that fitted behind the wheel hub on the output shaft, the final drive shaft. Well, this is them. As you can see, there is a di there's a big difference in cross section and there is a slight difference in diameter as one will fit inside the other. So these are the little ones that go on your final drive shafts. They are part number Kilo 623595. Two quid each, they were. They were two quid each as well, Barclay Williams. And we've got the large O-rings here, which is Kilo 623537, £4.50 each. That was a little Barclay Williams again, right? Stuart from Barclay Williams. That was a slight typo. Because I, I emailed Stuart and asked him for some quotes for the parts. Um, I was a slight typo on Stuart's email that he sent back. And he had these listed as £40.50. Well, you can imagine what that did for my heart rate. Until I phoned him and clarified it. And yet, £4.50 for those. Right, so that's all were put out. the bearings are good in the first final drive we obviously don't know what they're like in the second final drive because we haven't pulled them to bits yet but the bearings are good in the first final drive we just need to get a little bit of time to get at it um i'll take you for a walk around i have been at it with a wire brush but because it's sat for so long in the garage and you'll see it started to surface rust again but that's it's surface rust comes off quickly and easily that's not the problem it's the pitting we'll, as i say we'll get this bit done we'll take you outside we'll have a look at the casting and the bits and bobs for it i'm in two minds as to whether or not to make a shot blaster and shot blasters um the only thing if i make a shot blaster and a blaster i then have to make a bigger receiver for my compressor because I haven't got an, enough CFM cubic feet per minute to run a shot blaster so I need a bigger tank and let me little compressor build up the bigger tank and do bits we'll see right what else came in the post well linked to the tap extraction debacle right we have got th these didn't come like this okay what we've got here <clears throat> so what we've got here these are tungsten tipped steel drills um, and I will take a picture this time of the tips and put them up here and show you the difference between a steel tipped steel tungsten tipped drill and a masonry tungsten tipped drill but i can remember us saying when we were getting the tap out i'd order two of these well they literally turned up last week which was way too late but in my experiences with the first tipped drill i don't think they would have done anyway they would have certainly drilled the tap but i think they would have just ripped the tip clean out as the last one did they came those two that 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 one and that one came in this little box right so nice little storage box especially for tungsten tip drills it's uh delicate shall we say so i ordered can remember i telling you i ordered two of these again i'll put a picture up here for you these are the ball nosed solid carbide drills right these aren't tipped these are solid carbide drills these came individually packed in little boxes like this they were stuck in there and they were not expensive believe it or not i think they were three or four quid each 
not expensive so I've got two of those now then in my last video I did have a bit of a whinge about Aldi uh, and their lack of tools and equipment um, and guess what went back to Aldi later that week guess what I found I found a box you see here found a box of carbide tipped tile cutters now if you remember I did have a lot of success with the first one the tip got chipped down the edge here because of the flutes on the tap because obviously with this being flat as it comes around and hits the edge of the flute that's a massive pressure to put on something that's brittle and that's why I went with the solid carbide with a helical flute because as it comes around and up the the flutes on the tap there is no one con like sudden contact point like that hitting it there is a constant contact point that's shearing off as opposed to this so but the only thing is that little drill that one there doesn't fit in that nice little orange box but they do so they can be kept nice and safe in there I think they were about 350 370 something like that at Aldi and you know what if you get one hole out of one drill and you got five drills there it's all right isn't it even if you put a hole down the middle and then you can enlarge it but we're about to, if we get some time, we're going to start round two, which, which is the second final drive. Now, I know the stabilizer attachment bracket has got three broken off studs in there. And I think there is at least one stud that is broken off in the attachment rim that attaches the final drive to the axle. So we're going to get plenty of opportunity to test those drills and see what's what but if they fail what else did we get right got these solid carbide burrs so there that's what we've got look solid carbide burrs now they'll fit in the dremel the shafts are small enough they will go into the dremel so we can gently wear away again at any little issues that we have keeping my fingers crossed right as i say i've had a quick look at that final drive but i had a quick look at the last one and all and there was a tap hiding there but i've had a quick look at the final drive and i'm keeping my fingers crossed that there's no broken taps in the next one right so i'll tell you what we'll do that's all we've got in the post <clears throat> take you outside we'll have a look at this final i'll pull it out into the sunlight and we'll have a look at the final drive as it stands at the minute all right back in a minute right a bit breezy out here today but just as a side note quick look in there see if all the is back it's built on this Right, so here's our components that we've got cleaned up so far. That's the stabiliser support bracket. Or seal carrier. This is the, the brake drum. I'll give this a good wire brush the other day. <coughs> Well, it's been sitting now for probably two weeks and you can see the surface rush just start to come back on that but the carrier has put the casting the casting and the cover got a lot of surface rush coming back as I say I think what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to Make me sell a shot blaster. And I'm gonna have to shot blast it because it's 
the only way that the castings are that rough in here you know in, in here you can get in with a wire brush but the castings are so pitted trying to get things cleaned is uh, another story that's a bit breezy today isn't it so what we've got in here we've got the final drive shaft um, with oh, yeah, tinker one damaged stud here see the damage on the thread here I don't know what that's with I don't know if it's been a bad nut on there a rusted nut that's galled the threads or whether it's just been kind of been putting the wheel on because it's on the inside you'd expect if it was putting the wheel on roughly it would have been on the outside but anyway as you can see that's had a bit of a wire brushing so we're busy with the video at the minute about making a hydraulic press frame that we're going to put a simple little bottle jack into um, I'm not finished that video yet when I get it finished I'll release it you'll be able to see it but I'm going to use that press to push out that damaged stud on there the reason being yes I could probably wallop that out with a hammer chances are in the cold weather like this you could break away that flange so what we're going to do we're going to get that press sorted out try and push that out of there with either a two ton or a five ton jack let's see won't we right well that's it for this weekly yarn um hopefully we'll get a bit of time to spend on that in the next couple of days as i say i need to find a couple of gas bottles don't i, I want to make a sand blaster with i want to make an extension to my compressor with we'll see right guys well that's it for this weekly yarn Hopefully we'll find some time in the near future we can crack on with the bits and pieces here. But if we don't, we don't. We've got to help Gemma first, haven't we? As always, your time is greatly appreciated when you come visit us. Remember, if it's been useful, please like and subscribe. Tick the notification button so you know when my next video is released. And we'll see you in the next one. But remember, don't overthink it. It's only nuts and bolts.